There have always been movies in Hollywood, but they aren't often movements. With the release of Ryan Coogler's Marvel film Black Panther, we find ourselves in the midst of a pivotal cultural moment. Black Panther is the first black superhero to head to the big screen since the release of the Blade trilogy. Considering our political climate, the tides of change in Hollywood, and the research and history that went into making Black Panther, it may very well be one of the most important films of a generation. Obviously, with anything that comes out of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, a superhero, sensational gadgets, and astounding special effects stand at the center of Black Panther. However, this particular film is way more than just a movie. Personal connections Ryan Coogler, Andrew Goth, Getty Images As a young man from Oakland, California, Coogler deeply related to Chale, the king of Wakanda, growing up during a time when black representation in the mainstream and among superheroes, in particular, was sparse. Coogler, like many other black people growing up in the United States, saw a kinship and similarity in Black Panther. In an interview with New York Daily News, Coogler explained, how I learned about him was I asked the guy at my local comic book shop if he knew any black superheroes and he told me about Panther, I fell in love with the idea of superheroes when I was a kid. That's when my love and obsession was at its greatest point, and I loved everything. I loved the Ninja Turtles, and they're not even human. Dot dot dot. For whatever reason, younger people are even more in awe of these characters, the idea of superheroes. Representation continues to be vital. It reminds people that they're valued and that their humanity and stories are seen. Next, a world devoid of colonialization and unblemished history Black Panther, Marvel The Transatlantic Slave Trade, Slavery, Colonization, Jim Crow Laws, Segregation, and Racism have been deeply traumatic to black people across the globe. As a result of these brutal and horrific systems, families were ripped apart, connections to the motherland have been lost, and many countries in Africa have deeply suffered. Also, poverty, lack of education, and so much more continually persist and marginalize black people. Black Panther's home, Wakanda, was never touched by these atrocities and as a result, we can see how rich Africa and its people are through this fictional land. Lupita Nyong'o, who stars as a Wakandan spy and Chala's ex-lover, Mikia, in the film told the New York Daily News, This is an African nation that is self-determined, one that did not get interrupted by the assault of colonialism, and we can see how that self-determination looks, what modernity looks like to an African nation where another culture wasn't imposed. That's really exciting for African peoples to be able to see that image, and see themselves in the new light. Next, Heroic Black Women Black Female Warriors The film also features strong female women of color. Marvel for hundreds upon hundreds of years, black women, in particular, have been cast aside, looked down upon, harshly criticized for not living up to European standards of beauty, and insulted with other various stereotypes. Even within the black community, colorism has been prevalent which in turn has birthed practices like skin bleaching. With Black Panther, Coogler took a stand for black women, and in particular black women of darker hues. In casting Nyong'o, Denai Guerrero as Okoy, Letitia Wright as Shuri, and Angela Bassett as Queen Mother Ramonda, Coogler is explicitly saying that black women including dark-skinned black women are beautiful, powerful, and strong. Not only is Chala's royal guard, the Dora Milaje are the adored ones a majestic group of all-female warriors, his sister Shuri is a genius who is more brilliant than Tony Stark. These images are revolutionary. Next, the best villain in the MCU Various Perspectives Killmonger, Marvel Michael B. Jordan's Eric Killmonger is being heralded as the best villain that the MCU has ever seen for one crucial reason. 
embodying the rage of many black Americans who have suffered under white supremacy, Killmonger feels betrayed by Chala and Wakanda. He disgusted that they've chosen to hide instead of helping black people across the globe who have continued to be subjected to pain. Jordan is masterful in his performance and his fury is palpable. Next, the most important question a nearly all black cast Ryan Coogler created something that had never been done before. Jeff Spicer, Getty Images Coogler is the first black person to direct a Marvel film, and Black Panther boasts a nearly all black though diverse cast. As a result, this film looks and feels different than the other 17 films in the MCU. Black Panther is born out of a very particular perspective, one void of a white lens. For Kugler, taking on the story meant heading to South Africa to do research. He told NPR, For me, it was about this question of what does it mean to be African? Next, resources and technology Afrofuturism Letitia Wright as Princess Shuri in Black Panther, Marvel Wakanda is bursting with technology, and standing at the head of it all is Chala's younger sister, Shuri. Kugler took the time to carve out a world based on Afrofuturism, science fiction, and fantasy that reflects the African diaspora at the center. In fact, the entire reason why Wakanda has remained hidden from the outside world is because the country is rich in vibranium, that iconic metal in the Marvel Universe. Seeing other African countries getting pillaged and ripped apart by colonizers for their resources made Wakandans even more determined to protect their resources and technology. Shuri has used her country's resources to continually create new advances for Wakanda that range from her brother and Killmonger's Black Panther suits to medical advances that treat the sick and wounded. Wright who plays Shuri, told Den of Geek, I stayed very closely to the script, and I watched a lot of documentaries about kids, particularly young girls who love technology and I wanted to do it for them. Next, different views a new lens the cast is diverse. Cindy Ord, Getty Images for Sirius XM for too long, stories out of Hollywood have been told from a white male perspective, leaving out the voices and viewpoints of people of color and women. It's $200 million Black Panther and diverse cast and crew including costume designer Ruthie. Carter, co-writer Joe Robert Cole, director of photography Rachel Morrison, and many more, Googler is changing that narrative. As actress Gurira told the New York Daily News about the film, it's so exciting for the world because it's being told from the African perspective. That just obliterates the concept that things can only be told from the white perspective in order for them to be universal, which is ridiculous from the get-go. That's a ridiculous idea. I love that this movie really sets a precedent where that is no longer going to stand any ground. Check out the cheat sheet on Facebook. Page 2 The Big Bang Theory CBS When the Big Bang Theory first premiered in 2007, no one knew it would become the massive phenomenon that it is today. 11 season and in going strong, the CBS series remains one of the most popular and widely watched sitcoms on TV. We decided to take a look back at some of our favorite episodes from the show's run so far. While there are obviously a lot to choose from, these 12 episodes listed in chronological order are some of the biggest standouts, highlighting the best of Sheldon, Penny, Leonard and the rest of the gang. 1. The Middle Earth Paradigm, Season 1, Episode 6 The guys attend a Halloween party at Penny's apartment dressed in exactly the kind of nerdy costumes you'd expect, Sheldon is the Doppler effect, Leonard as Frodo, Raj as Thorpe and Howard as Robin Hood. Needless to say, they don't exactly fit in with Penny's friends, making for a series of hysterically awkward encounters. By the end of the night, Leonard and Penny have shared their first kiss and Raj wakes up in bed with a random girl. 
The episode is the perfect showcase of what the Big Bang Theory is about, at least in early seasons, four nerdy guys trying desperately to fit in and sometimes, against all odds, actually succeeding. 2. The Barbarian Sublimation, Season 2, Episode 3 In this episode, Sheldon gets Penny hooked to the world of gaming by introducing her to the PC game, Age of Conan. Penny, sick of getting nowhere in her personal and professional life, quickly becomes addicted, foregoing hygiene and work to spend days playing, eating Cheetos, and bugging Sheldon for ways to get to the next level. It's one of the best early examples of the funny and unexpectedly warm relationship between Sheldon and Penny, aka, Shenny. Plus, Penny realizing that she has to snap out of it while talking to Howard makes for a hilarious moment. 3. The Panty Pinata Polarization, Season 2, Episode 7 More of the Best of Sheldon and Penny, after the latter gets three behavioral strikes. Sheldon banishes her from their apartment. Unlike Leonard, Raj, and Howard, Penny refuses to apologize, setting off a prank war. She sets off his neurotic tendencies by telling him she's touched his food, while he blocks Penny from using their Wi-Fi. But it's Penny that gets the last laugh, she calls Sheldon's mother, who forces him to apologize. Talk about sweet revenge. 4. The Bath Item Gift Hypothesis, Season 2, Episode 11 It's Christmas time and after finding out that Penny has gotten him a gift, Sheldon finds himself forced to reciprocate the gesture. Without knowing exactly how much she's spent on him, he can't make up his mind and ends up buying a bunch of gift baskets to cover his bases. When it comes time to actually exchange gifts, Penny presents him with something beyond his wildest dreams, a napkin used and signed by Star Trek's Leonard Nimoy. Cue a hilarious Sheldon-sized freakout that results in the rarest of occurrences, a hug from Sheldon to Penny. 5. The Adhesive Duck Deficiency, Season 3, Episode 8 Leonard, Raj, and Howard go on a camping trip to watch a meteor shower, while Sheldon decides to stay home. Once there, the boys accept cookies from some other campers, only to find out they are laced with drugs. They spend the rest of their trip hilariously stoned, telling each other their deepest, and in Howard's case, grossest, and desperately searching for food, which they find in the form of an I love you brisket, in Howard's backpack. That alone would make for a great episode, but hilarity is also ensuing back in their apartment building. In another classic example of Shenny, Penny slips in the shower and needs Sheldon's help getting dressed and going to the hospital. When Penny returns on some very strong painkillers, she finally gets to give Sheldon a taste of his own medicine and makes him sing, Soft Kitty, 6. The Einstein Approximation, Season 3, Episode 14 In this episode, Sheldon is once again grappling with a puzzle he can't solve, specifically, a physics problem about electron behavior. After enduring sleepless nights and going to all kinds of crazy lengths to try to find an answer, he decides he needs to take on a menial job that will allow him to free up his mind. He ends up masquerading as a waiter at the Cheesecake Factory where Penny works, where he finally gets his answer. But the true highlight of the episode, when Leonard gets a call in the middle of the night that he has to pick Sheldon up at a local mall, where he is using the plastic balls in a children's ball pit to build carbon atoms. As Leonard desperately tries to get him out of the pit so they can go home, Sheldon keeps diving in and popping out of the balls, shouting, Gazinga, 7. The Pants Alternative, Season 3, Episode 18 Sheldon is chosen to receive an award at the university and has to give an acceptance speech. He doesn't like public speaking and tries to back out, but the gang offers to help him. Penny takes him shopping for a new suit, Rush tries to treat him with meditation, and Leonard gives him a psychological assessment. 
none of it helps Sheldon calm down and when the night comes, he's so nervous that Penny convinces him to drink. He gets drunk and ends up mooning the audience while on stage, dot, but not before telling this gem of a nerdy joke, a neutron walks into a bar and asks how much a drink is. The bartender says, for you, no charge, Bazinga, 8. The Staircase Implementation, Season 3, Episode 22 This flashback episode finally gave viewers two of the answers they'd been waiting for, how Sheldon and Leonard first met and how the elevator in their building got permanently broken. Both stories are hilarious, particularly when Leonard recounts all the hoops Sheldon made him jump through just to see the apartment. The episode proves that, yes, believe it or not, there was a time when these guys were even more socially inept. The best moment of the episode. When Leonard walks into his soon-to-be bedroom see a spray painted from Sheldon's ex-roommate, die, Sheldon, die. 9. The Cruciferous Vegetable Amplification, Season 4, Episode 2 When Sheldon works out that he won't live long enough to download his consciousness into a robot body, he attempts to extend his lifespan by changing his diet and eating cruciferous vegetables. When those only serve to give him gas, he instead decides to build mobile virtual presence device, which leads to countless funny moments. Case in point, Leonard trying to turn off Sheldon while driving his virtual presence to work and Sheldon trying to figure out how to open his office door, considering his device has no hands. Major bonus, Apple co-founder Steve Wozniak appears in one of the show's best cameos. 10. The Prestidigitation Approximation, Season 4, Episode 18 What bugs Sheldon even more than the thought of other people's germs? finding a puzzle that he can't solve, as seen in this episode. When Howard performs a magic trick, Sheldon, much to his annoyance, can't figure out how it's done. He tries every solution, to no avail, and Howard, enjoying his new power over Sheldon, only continues to rub it in his face. Meanwhile, Priya feels threatened by Penny and tells Leonard to stop hanging out with her. Funniest reveal, the entire gang has been in on Howard's card trick and has just been messing with Sheldon. 11. The Love Spell Potential, Season 6, Episode 23 As the girls plan a trip to Vegas, the boys excitedly organize a Dungeons & Dragons marathon. The trip ends up not working out thanks to Amy, and the entire group ends up playing the game. Sheldon and Amy take their relationship to the next level after the rest of the group casts a love spell on their game characters. Meanwhile, Raj goes on date with Lucy, a girl who is even more shy than he is. Bonus, Howard brings major laughs as the Dungeon Master, incorporating impressions of celebrities like Christopher Walken and Al Pacino. 12. The Prom Equivalency, Season 8, Episode 8 The girls decide to reenact their high school proms with the guys since no one except for Penny had memorable ones. Sounds like a cheesy premise, but this episode is actually filled with charming and funny moments, as everyone reacts differently to the thought of having a prom. While most are excited, Sheldon is having a panic attack because he knows sex is often a presumed part of prom night. In the end, both central couples have great moments. Leonard and Penny share a sweet dance on the roof, during which they lightheartedly riff on Leonard's insecurities. Meanwhile, as Amy dances around the idea of telling Sheldon that she loves him, he beats her to the punch, leading to one of the sweetest moments in their long-running relationship. Check out the cheat sheet on Facebook.